Hey guys, so I am here in a casket selection room or showroom or whatever term um, you want it to go by. A lot of people say selection room though. And I'm going to go over some facts and information about caskets for you guys. So I must preface the video that I have decided lighting in funeral homes is not conducive to great videos. This room we've got a lot of bright spotlights I'm going to be working around so bear with me um, that the lighting is probably not going to be the best and it's just what it is. So um, so caskets. I'm going to first start with just some terms and some um, a little history about them going into this especially since you may hear me use some words and you don't quite know what they are so we'll start with just a little bit of education on that level. So the word coffin came from the Greek word Kofanos or kofanos, which meant a basket. Essentially, um, the term coffin and casket began as uh, like a little basket that you would put loved items in or treasured items. And so when the funeral business kind of started in terms of, of burying people, that term then came over to the basket or the receptacle that your loved one was put into for burial. So pretty easy um, transition of that word. And that word is actually still, you know, within the last 50 years used in um, some European and other areas that use that term still. Um, like coffin for a little box or a little a little basket that you put treasured items in not referring to a burial receptacle. Now, casket and coffin is sometimes an interchangeable word that people use, but a coffin is actually the six-sided caskets or <laughs> coffin that tapers. So at the shoulder, it gets wider, has flat top, flat bottom, very, you know, Dracula style, old school coffin. In America, it's not really a, a shape or style that is used anymore. You could still get one if you wanted one, but it's, it's not distributed, it's not manufactured here on regularity or on mass production. So the standard style is four-sided, rectangular, box-style casket. That is now the, the typical. Um, so way back in the day, in about the 18th, 19th century, coffins, you know, were were becoming popular, and um, but folks were still very fearful of them. And they created something called a safety coffin, and I always thought this was kind of a cool thing, uh, part of the history of caskets and coffins. So they created these safety coffins for folks that had a fear of being buried alive, which is taphophobia, and so they would rig up like a bell or some kind of alarm that was above ground at the grave and would have a string down to underground so that way if somebody was not done and they woke up they could ring this bell and it would wake people up upstairs so I always thought that was just such an interesting part of the history of, of caskets. So a few terms I'm gonna hit on um, coffins and caskets I've kinda defined the two differences there I may also mention something called a beer and it's B-I-E-R, and that is what a casket goes on in the funeral home, at the front of the funeral home. It's typically, looks like a coffee table with wheels. Um, and if you ever actually see uh, some of the old style ones, maybe from the 70s, 80s, even, maybe 50s, 60s even, um, you probably had a coffee table in your house that looked the exact same way, it just didn't have the wheels on it. They are the same size, same dimensions, have the little doors in the center, same um, kind of carved legs at the end, so uh, very same styles. And that's because a lot of caskets and furniture were manufactured in the same building, especially for wood. Uh, it was just as easy to manufacture caskets and the beers and the cemetery or the funeral home uh, equipment as it was the other furniture. So they were all created at the same places. Um, then you've got church trucks. Now a church truck is the term. It's a large accordion style item, and I'll show you one here in a little bit. And it folds up, and you put it in the vehicle, the hearse or the van to go to 
a church or wherever you might be having a service. And so it's easily transportable and it's used the same way a beer is for the casket to rest on, but it's created for transport. So that's called a church truck. Um, I'm gonna hit on a couple um, items within a casket next. So I'm gonna go over to a casket so I can kind of show you hands on. Okay, so we're over at, this is a bronze casket, and this is what's called a half couch. So it means that the foot end closes and the top portion is open. It is not a 50-50 uh, close between, some people think that that line down the middle is exactly the center and it is not. Um, the head portion is longer than the foot portion. So inside the foot portion, it is typically um, nothing fancy. Sometimes this foot portion though is not oops, finished, um, where it's just cardboard on the inside. It doesn't have actual cloth. But this is a little bit higher end because it's a bronze casket, so it has that cloth on the, the inside. Um, now a, a full couch casket, I've talked about this before, that a full couch is where the whole upper portion opens in one piece. Um, it doesn't uh, separate at all. So you would see the whole individual when they were displayed out for visitation. And so um, it takes a little more um, ingenuity with getting people dressed that you've got the shoes and the socks and the pants and I know funeral directors who take newspaper and cut it so you get that the fold in the newspaper and you lay that in so that the pants with the top crease in a man's pants lay perfectly with that newspaper underneath so a lot of funeral directors when you use the full couches you have to get a little more creative with um, the display like I've talked about before um, there's a lot of showmanship to what we do, and it's figuring out how to do those things respectfully and skillfully. So, very interesting. So, also when we look at the casket, so there's a pillow, there's a bed underneath, and that bed sometimes will go up and down so that we can adjust, and sometimes it'll tilt towards you and away from you. So we can really get um, the person positioned how we want to for the visitation and service. Uh, we've also got the liners. Um, they come in different colors and different fabrics. Typically, um, if you're just ordering out of a catalog or um, kind of in a quick, quick turnaround, um, the casket comes as it comes. So you can't pick this color in this casket and if you want a special order and you want to wait a few extra days, you can do some of those things. I have had people buy metal caskets and take them to auto body shops and have them painted special colors. I've had um, painters, like stencil painters, come in and, and paint design all over the vehicles. You can do, or all over, sorry, vehicles all over the caskets. I've had, um, airbrush designs done in caskets or um, decal designs that you can put on like um, let's say it was a teenager and they played football and they put their name and a football and their number and put that right over the the foot end here of the casket that would just stick to kind of like a car um, so got those things now the interiors are made of polyester satin velvet crepe all sorts of different fabrics. Um, you can get specialty panels that go. We're going to travel here a second. I'll show you. So you can do specialty panels. Some of these come this way where there's a design, but you can get special panels that pop in. Um, and those can be totally personalized with pictures or names. It just depends how long you want to wait to get something personalized that comes. Um, like you can see here, there's a separate one that you can buy. Um, different companies have different hobbies and themes and things that you can get to put in the lid of the casket. So, or pictures of the loved ones that's done in a um, progressive timeline or, or something like that. And to some people, that definitely that definitely matters. 
um, and they like that personalization. They want to do something different. They want to do something that's unique to their casket and their person that has passed. Um, there's also some of the higher end come. Can you see this? With a little tray. So this tray pops out and goes back in. It's called a memory tray. People can put little trinkets and things. Um, if there's no tray, you just put them right in the casket with the person. So there's also in the metal caskets, when they seal, um, they come with this little tube. So this little tube goes in the end and information about the person is typed up, rolled, and put in this. And then this is sealed in the casket. So this all started about because of, you know, if you go down south and let's say hurricanes and there's flooding and caskets in the cemetery all surface and they're floating around. Well, whose casket is whose, who's in them? And so they created this system that you can then identify a casket easily or more easily um, with the information that's in that tube because it is uh, theoretically airtight in there. So um, then the exterior. So I'm going to come down to some of the hardware. So you've got what's called a swing bar. Some caskets have salad bars so this doesn't move it is one solid bar this is less expensive because it's different hardware than this you would have to have hinged handles and everything on this one whereas this is solid so it costs less um, to manufacture and to make so you get into um, all the different hardware and the um, ornateness of the wood, things like that. So I'll show you some of those different items on the caskets as we get into more about the caskets. So let's go check out our first uh, material and I think we're talking about wood first. Okay, so we're going to talk about wood caskets next and I'm by a pine casket which I can't even tell you how many times I've been asked, well I just want a pine box. Well a pine box is going to be much more expensive than a lot of other casket types and people say well why is it so expensive and I say have you built a kitchen lately or had to go buy wood of any kind lately and actually looked at price of different types of wood and pine is a very expensive actually wood to purchase um, so it's all about the material that you're making something with just like it is in any uh, any business um, so it takes 130 to 150 board feet of lumber to make one casket, just to give an idea. So factor in all that lumber plus the labor and you cannot make a cheap old casket, which I don't want to sell somebody a cheap old casket. You know, I want somebody to buy something that's, that's to their needs for their loved one. And that might be a cheap old casket. You know, I've had people joke they want to bring in a refrigerator box for their mom to be cremated and rather than, you know, use a box. So it's all up to the, the purchaser. It's not about what I like or about what any person that sells casket likes. It's about what the individual family wants. Um, so I was saying with caskets, you know, the ornateness is what's really going to change the price in the casket as well. If you have just square corners or if you have carved, um, engraved corners and handles and things that obviously is going to raise a price uh, on it because of the craftsmanship and the time that goes into it. So there's some different religions that require a, a wooden casket um, and the, like an Orthodox Jewish um, burial it needs to not have any screws or metal on it even so they've do like little pegs out of wood and the whole thing is constructed of wood even the attachment pieces so it's the beautiful beautiful caskets because of the craftsmanship put into them because they need to all be of wood um, there's also now solder um, I'm sure you've you've heard of like solder furniture and solder office furniture and solder does a line of, of caskets as well that are all um, you know, laminate or veneer or 
um, you know, a lower end but nice quality that kind of fits the bill for people. That you get that wood look, um, that richer, warmer feel that a wood casket provides, um, but at a much less price because it's not a solid hardwood. So there's just different options available. Um, you know, so when you're looking at caskets, if you're shopping for one, and um, which sounds so weird, like you're out shopping, but um, you know, when you have to select one and wood is important to you, make sure you're asking the question, is this a hardwood? Is this laminate? Is this veneer? What is this actually made out of? Um, so that you understand and you're comfortable with what you're purchasing. A wood casket also, um, when we talk about sealing, you can't seal a wood casket. There's too much fluctuation in uh, the, you know, when they're buried in the moisture and, and the temperatures and wood warps and wood cracks and wood splits and it just, it, it's not an item that can you can seal. So if a casket that seals is important to you, then you should never select a wood casket. Okay, steel. Steel and metal caskets are next up. Um, they became popular in the early 1900s when metal just started becoming more available. The only decline was during World War II when there was a huge metal crisis and so um, they weren't used very much there for a year or two, but then they've resurged. I think a lot of it is price point because you can do a nice and expensive 20 gauge non-sealing steel casket um, and meet most any price point with that which a lot of people like when they are, are really focused on wanting to do burial and not do uh, a cremation so I'm gonna just so here's kind of just a basic standard casket one word that comes into play a lot is gauge. So we say 20 gauge. Um, the higher the number, the lower, uh, or the, yeah, the higher the number, the actual weaker the steel is. 20 gauge is what a lot of vehicles are made out of though. Um, so it's the number of sheets of steel that are put together in one inch of uh, material. So it's, uh, let me read, how many sheets in one inch of metal? Larger the number, the weaker the steel. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of people think the higher the number, oh, 20 gauge must be better, but actually when you go down to 16 is a stronger form of steel. So that's your steel education. <laughs> um, but so there's a gasket, let me. So this one is a ceiling casket. There is a rubber gasket around the whole edge of the casket under this overhang. And so these little locks here go into a groove down here. And there's a bar inside. So when the casket is closed, um, we put just minimal, not force, but we hold it so that it locks. And then in through this screw here, open it up and insert a casket key. That's a universal key. Goes in and locks. Um, you just rotate it and it tightens up that bar in there and locks down the casket. Um, so it creates what is pretty effective as a moisture barrier and you know airtight, but um, you can't claim any casket is 100% proof because we can't know what's going to be happening down on the ground. We can't foresee, you know, different problems that you may run into. So, um, you know, we they're hopefully creating some kind of a barrier, but we don't know that it's, you know, how what percentage of a proof it is. There's just no long term, there's not enough disinterments done to know where the casket's brought up and looked at and see how much moisture has gotten in. Um, that'd be a huge study, but um, it hasn't happened yet. So let's see with some metal. Um, and some people don't even want one that seals. They want the airflow, they want the movement, just because it's a different decomposition form. 
um, because of the bacteria that's in there and if it's closed in then like we said before that body is going to liquefy more than mummify whereas if there's air moving through there um, they're going to more down to a skeleton form than the liquid form so in a nutshell <laughs> um, without using too much um, scientific talk I guess um, copper and bronze are kind of the highest level uh, for caskets that we see a lot of um, and they are measured in weight so you get like a 32 ounce copper casket and that's because of the weight so let me read um, it weighs 32 ounces per square foot so that's how they measure and I don't know why it's different between the two industries but it is in terms of the bronze and the steel industries so um, that is the metal caskets um, overview I'm trying to look at these caskets over here and see if I see any other things to to mention but um, pretty basic going to go now and I'm going to talk about rental caskets and show you uh, one of the cremation boxes. Rental caskets, something that in, I'm often questioned about as well, you know, can I get a rental casket? Do we have to buy a casket? Well, I'm going to show you the inner workings of a rental. So this casket is a rental actually. And so from the top looks completely normal. Um, not that it would be a rental. So what happens is all of this interior here is one-time use. So, like this part here, Velcro's on. Under the pillow here, you can see, so there's a cardboard base to this that the person is laying in with their, um, with the mattress. And then this also Velcro's off. To the back. Oops, Velcro's off to the back. And so at the base of the casket, this end here opens and comes flat down. And then this base of it, this cardboard base, is then rolled out. And so it is a one-time use in the inside that the person's actually in but the exterior is a solid wood, beautiful unit um, to be used. And some folks do want maybe like a more of a metal. I do know one funeral home that does metal, metal rental caskets, but then after the service, the person's moved out of that casket into a cardboard unit for like cremation. And then that metal casket has to be scrapped. So it's taken to a scrapyard because they can't be reused by law. So it's definitely an interesting component um, for the caskets is the rental casket. So I'm going to show you just a cremation box. So this portion of it pops up to be a literal box over the top of the person. And the base of this one is a wooden base it allows for um, supporting a heavier person um, that they might be caring for you can see they're labeled with name funeral home which end is the head um, if the pacemaker's been taken out if they have eyeglasses jewelry everything so that this is marked correctly before they go to the crematory. However, one of these can be used for burial as well. They'll just be placed in this and then placed in the vaults in the ground. So definitely an option um, too. While we're here, I'm going to also show you the church truck, which is this item. Um, so it locks out so that it's set um, and then it folds right up and can fold back out. So this is the transportable item that I had talked about previously. One last option I'm going to show you too is what's called a cloth covered casket. So we see them in a white color, a reddish color, and a blue color most often. And they are just that. They are made of cloth on the outside. Um, it's a just a fiberboard casket and it is 
don't know that up close you can really see much, but some of them have a flower kind of pattern to them. Um, but they're a very basic, basic casket. As you can see, the inside of this is just cardboard. Um, just a basic um, piece of foam down in the foot. Or not foam, but um, cotton down in the foot to create a, a mattress. So um, some people refer to these as, as popper caskets or indigent caskets because this is what a lot of um, indigent families uh, or individuals are used. It's a state approved casket. Um, but a lot of people just out of practicality choose this casket also. So, so I think the last thing I wanted to touch on was the Costco debate. Um, I can't tell you, and I've talked about this before, but how many times I've been asked about um, buying caskets from Costco or Walmart or some online place because they have to be a lot cheaper, right? Uh, and you'll find, depending on the funeral home, that yes, they may be cheaper or less expensive. Uh, it just depends on the funeral home pricing that you're working with. Now, um, funeral homes cannot charge you more for bringing in a Costco casket. It's an FTC rule. They can't charge you for delivery of it. They can't require that you're there to meet the truck when it brings it or to sign for it. Um, they, a funeral home needs to be accommodating if you're bringing in your own casket, regardless if you made it or if um, you're buying it from Costco. I have never had a family go through with their thoughts of getting one from Costco and it's just been their choice. They just wanted to get one and not, not hassle with worrying about it shipping and it possibly, you know, if there was any damage or anything and so they just got one at the funeral home that I was at at the time. So uh, it's all up to the family. I have had a couple people build their own. It was, I googled and you can buy a kit on Amazon.com to make your own, you know, Amazon to build your own casket. So just a plain, simple uh, wooden box, but you can buy and build your own. Uh, it's really interesting what there is out there that has come about in the last you know, 10 years in terms of caskets and what you can do for yourself. Um, I think that comes along with the home burials and the green burials and, and providing more options for those things um, or for those circumstances that you wanna have. So. Hopefully this gives you some good overview of caskets. If you have any more questions about any of the types of caskets or components or anything that I went over today, by all means, shoot me a message, drop a comment below, and hope to see you guys soon.